Now we're going to find the expected value of p squared for xi1. So this is the expression for xi1, and we're going to do this substitution as we have been doing for the past three videos. And then as you can see, doing the substitution, we will arrive at this expression for xi1. So in order to find the expected value of p squared, we're going to do this integral. We're going to integrate xi1, and then we're going to apply the momentum operator to xi1 two times. So all we have to do is to evaluate this expression to arrive at the expected value of p squared. So we can do a, a slight uh, manipulation of this term over here. I can pull out the constants. So I have a negative h bar squared. So in the end we have xi1 times the second derivative of xi1, dx squared dx. So in order to calculate this expression, we now need to find what this is going to be equal to. So now it really just, our problem really just descends into a rather mundane task of doing differentiation. So first of all, let us focus on trying to find this term. So our xi1 is going to be equal to this expression over here. And then we're going to take the second derivative of xi1. So to find the second derivative, let's find the first derivative first. So we can apply the chain rule, because everything here is in terms of y, it would be more convenient for us to use the chain rule. So we differentiate this in terms of y, then we multiply this by dy dx. And then, as always, just remind ourselves that y is related to x by this formula. So dy dx is actually a constant. So in this case, it becomes this constant times the y derivative of this term over here. So we take d dy y times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So doing this differentiation, we're going to use the product rule. So uh, differentiating the first term over here, y, it just becomes 1. So we get e to the power of negative y squared over 2. And then we're going to retain this term, and then we're going to differentiate this. So we're going to use the, cha uh, the chain rule. So we just differentiate this term over here, it becomes a negative y. So in the end, you see that this, this negative y will just combine with this term over here to become negative y squared. So this is the first derivative. So let us take the second derivative. And once again, we're going to use the chain rule. So we're going to have a dy dx and then we're going to take the y derivative of this term over here. So we just need to go through that procedure again. So we can group up some of these constants. So dy dx, recall it's equal to this constant over here. So we can combine it with this term over here. We get m omega divided by h bar. So these are all the constants. And then we need to take the y derivative of this part. So let's open a new page. and focus on this uh, derivative over here, minus y squared e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So as before, we just differentiate uh, this. We, don't, we can just use the chain rule. And then as before, we use the product rule. So we differentiate this part, and it becomes negative uh, 2y. And then we retain the y squared, and then we differentiate this part negative y. Once again, we're using the chain rule. So in the end, you get something like this. So we have minus 3 of these y terms over here. And then here you have plus y to the power of 3 e to the power of y squared over 2. So this is your expression for the second derivative of xi1. So we get negative 3y plus y to the power of 3 times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So now we're ready to substitute this expression directly into this integral over here to, so that we can evaluate what this expected value should be. So let's open a new page. So the expected value of p squared is equal to this constant squared, this integral. So xi1, we can uh, apply this directly into the formula first. So it's just y times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. 
and then we need to substitute this term in which we just found to be equal to this over here so we substitute that in as well so we have quite a bit of constants negative 3y plus y to the power of 3 e to the power of negative y squared over 2 so that's the entire second derivative of uh, xi1 and then this is going to be dx so we want to change it into in terms of dy so we're going to do, do this substitution for the integral and then you see that dy is equal to the square root of h bar divided by m omega dy is going to be equal to dx so we can replace dx by this term over here so we've been doing this substitution for the last three videos already so should be fairly uh, fairly familiar with this process over here so of course we can try to group up the constants so we have these square root of twos we can group them up we have these alphas we can group them up into an alpha square the h bar here they cancel out we have this negative sign so in the end we have this m omega h bar so these constants are dealt with so in the end you are left with this integral over here negative 3y squared because there's this y over here that multiplies into this term plus y to the power of 4 and also don't forget these square root terms over here so we also have these terms over here and we have e to the power of negative y squared so both of these multiply together so you get e to the power of negative y squared dy so in the end you see you're, you're faced with two, uh, two integrals so for the y squared term here you get y squared times e to the power of negative y squared dy for the y to the power of 4 term you have this integral over here y to the power of 4 times e to the power of negative y squared dy so in the last video we've actually uh, been dealing with these integrals for quite a few times already and if you check out on the last few videos you'll see that this integral over here is equal to the square root of pi over 2 and in the last video I'll also prove to you that this is equal to 3 over 4 the square root of pi so in the end you're left with something like this so you have minus 3 here times this integral so this entire integral over here up top so let's just get rid of this so this entire integral over here this is going to be equal to negative 3 square root of pi divided by 2 so it's just negative 3 times this term over here plus 3 over 4 square root of pi and then this is just a rather simple case of addition of fractions so this is equal to negative 3 over 4 square root of pi so this is what this entire integral is equal to it's equal to negative 3 over 4 square root of pi so now we can combine it with this expression here to arrive at this expected value so first of all the negative signs cancel out which is always a good thing so we have these constants here alpha squared is just equal to m omega divided by pi h bar square root and then here we have uh, 3 over 4 and then we have a square root of pi which combines with this term over here and then you see that it perfectly cancels out with this which is always good news and then this 2 cancels out with this so in the end you have 3 over 2 m omega h bar so this is your answer this is the expected value of p square for the first stationary state